how live load and dead load impact storefront systems. Welcome to Building Knowledge 101. In this by science video, we will discuss how to evaluate the impacts of both live load and dead load on aluminum storefront framing systems, looking at both the impact of wind and gravity. Let's talk about some of the forces acting against the storefront system. Before we start to install any frames, we wanna take a look at what are the forces that are gonna be acting upon that. The first force I wanna talk about is the force of the wind. So when you look at an elevation, when the wind hits an elevation, on the front side, it's gonna push the frames in. You got positive load. On the back side, it's gonna suck the frames outward, bend them outward, so you have negative load. So let me quickly illustrate that here. If you watch these frames here, you'll see when the wind hits them from the front, front on the back side, it's going to draw them out, hits them on the front side, it pushes them in. So all throughout the day, your frames are being pulled inward, pushed in, or pulled outward, or pulled pushed inward by the force of the wind, positive and negative pressure. So when wind hits an elevation, here we got a punched opening with glass in it. When wind hits this elevation, it's going to push the glass in and the glass is going to transfer its load to the frames around it. And the frames have been anchored all the way around the perimeter, so they're holding firm. So we're not really worried here. We're, we've got the frames anchored. But in this elevation, we've got an intermediate vertical. The perimeter is anchored firm, but the vertical is only attached at the top and the bottom, the head and the sill. So when the wind hits that, there's no intermediate support. So the vertical itself has to be able to withstand the pressure of the wind. So deflection limitation is referred to as L over 175. L represents length. So in this case, our length is 10 foot tall. So we're going to put 120 over 175. And the maximum allowable deflection for this elevation is 0.68. Now we use L over 175 up to a height of 13 foot 6 inches. Anything above 13 foot 6 inches, we use L over 240 plus minus quarter inch but that's our deflection limitation for every frame. So here now is that same uh, vertical, ele that same elevation. It's 10 foot tall, 10 foot wide. We have an intermediate vertical in it. So you have five feet of glass on each side. So we start evaluating the wind upon that vertical. The first thing we want to define is the tributary area. And the tributary area is defined as the amount of surface area on each side of each vertical that the vertical has to support. So basically, you're looking at half the width of the glass on each side of it. So in this elevation, I've got five foot vertical spacing. So the intermediate vertical is supporting two and a half feet of glass on each side of it. Now that can vary a little bit. If you look at this elevation, our spacing is not consistent. So the intermediate vertical here has two and a half feet of space on one side and three on the other. So look over your elevations and make sure you pick the worst case scenario and evaluate where the worst case is going to be. Make sure the wind load, uh, the vertical will support the wind load. Now, every manufacturer you're working with is going to have wind load charts very similar to this. And what you're going to do is take the tributary area of your elevation and apply it to this wind load chart. So you can see our tributary area is 5 by 10. So we're going to start with width across the bottom, which is a 5 feet, and height, which is 10 feet. And where those two lines meet, it needs to be underneath the curved line that represents your wind load. So you can see there's a couple of curved lines here, and those are labeled A, B, C, D, E. They represent different wind loads. A represents 15 PSF. So if our wind load on this project was 15 PSF, we would be fine because where our 5 foot and 10 foot lines meet, that is below or to the left of the curve representing 15 PSF. But if we had 20 PSF now, you can see this, this frame will not meet that because the intersection of those lines is above the wind load curve representing 20 PSF. So we need to reevaluate something there. So this would fail, this would not meet the wind load. So let's go back to that elevation we're looking at, 10 by 10. We introduced an intermediate vertical. Now let's introduce a horizontal to the elevation. Now instead of two lights of glass, we have four lights of glass. So when the wind hits those lights of glass, they start to deflect. Then they transfer their load to the frames all the way around them. Now the tributary area here has changed. It's more of this diamond pattern. And worse yet, it's got a focal point here where all the load is concentrated where the horizontal meets the vertical member. So in an elevation like this, 
we're 10 foot tall, verticals four foot on center. We need to look for a wind load chart that says with horizontals. This is our tributary area. We're two feet on each side of it. So now the chart we're looking at here says with horizontals. So all frames are gonna have two separate wind load charts, one with horizontals, one without horizontals. So now here, if our wind load was 15 PSF, we're good to go. You can see four foot vertical spacing, 10 foot tall, where those meet is below or to the left of the line representing 15 PSF. But if our wind load was 20 PSF, now you can see the intersection of the two lines is above the curve representing 20 PSF. So this would not work. This is a failure. So we need to look at some other options. So I'm gonna reach over and grab another mullion here. And I'm going to check the wind load chart of this mullion that has a much deeper wall section. See how it's heavier wall section on the front and the back? Now you can see the intersection of the four foot and 10 foot is below 30 PSF. So this is a very strong mullion. This is probably more mullion than you need because you're just shooting to meet 20 PSF and this one is, exceeds 30 PSF. So most manufacturers are going to have an, a range of options for your vertical. As you can see, Looking at the line up here, as you move from the left across to the right, the mullions get progressively thicker and heavier. They're not growing in depth. They're still two inch by four and a half, but the wall sections are getting heavier, which is increasing the structural property of it. So all manufacturers are gonna have a range of verticals that you're gonna select from. So if the one on the left doesn't meet the wind load, move to the next one. If that doesn't meet the wind load, go to the third one. So you have that range of options there. So that's wind load. The other force that's acting upon an elevation is what we call dead load. And that's the weight of the glass, the gravity load of the glass upon the horizontals. When we put glass into a frame, the weight of it has to be carried by the horizontals. We can't allow the horizontal to deflect more than an eighth of an inch. So all glass is set on setting blocks. And glass fabricators want us to have two setting blocks per lot of glass, not three, not one, but two. They need to be four inches long. And they also want them located at quarter points, meaning the setting blocks would be located one quarter of the width end from each end of it. So an eight foot lot of glass would have setting blocks located two feet in from each side. Now, the closer the setting blocks are to the verticals, the faster the weight of the glass is transferred to the ver verticals preventing the horizontal from deflecting. So let me, let me demonstrate that for you. Here you can see a horizontal with the setting blocks toward the ends, close to the verticals. As we move the setting blocks to the center, notice how the horizontal starts to deflect more. So the glass fabricators want us to start with the setting blocks at quarter points. And then if it still causes deflection, we can evaluate and relocate that. So let me show you what I mean. Here's an elevation where we've got a large light of glass. Now, the light of glass on the sill, I'm not really worried about. I'm going to put setting blocks at quarter points, and then I'm going to shim underneath that. So the weight of the glass is going to be transferred to the sill member, to the shims, to the slabs. So I'm not worried about it. But this light of glass on top of the horizontal, that's what I'm concerned about. I'm going to start with my setting blocks at quarter points and evaluate that and realize that's going to cause the horizontal to over deflect, and it could potentially damage the light of glass below it. So I can move my setting blocks to six points or eighth point, which is going to transfer the load quicker to the verticals and reduce the deflection in the horizontal member. Now you can see by moving that, I've reduced my deflection. If you start to move beyond eighth point, you need to contact the glass fabricator and make sure they'll still warranty the unit because now you've got a lot of weight concentrated in the center that's unsupported in the insulated glass unit. So all manufacturers can have charts like this. This is a dead load chart. And the way you use this is you look at the width of the glass across the bottom and then the height of the glass going up vertically. And where those two lines meet each other, the curves A, B, C represents the setting block locations. A is quarter point, B is six point, and C is eighth point. So this check the weight of the size of the glass and determine what setting point you need to have for your uh, setting blocks. And don't forget the header. If you've got a lot of glass above a door, you've got a, a transom bar. Transom bars also have setting block location. So make sure that the weight of the glass on a transom bar is not more than the system can support. That is all we have time for in this video. If you'd like to watch more of our 101 video series, subscribe to our YouTube channel, Conair Company, Inc.